Yes. Okay, so I'm the session after the session after lunch, right? So I'll try and keep it interesting. But, uh, you know, we heard about a lot of importance about data. Let's kind of now, and the interesting thing that I took from the panel and the great brands that they represent is, I didn't know that LensCard had, you know, visits at home to check your eyes. So about after the amount of content that I've consumed over the weekend, I'll probably book a, you know, eye slot, uh, you know, eye checkup. Uh, you know, Pernorica is, you know, one of the favorite brands is Shivas, fix a drink. And hopefully I don't call Dependr for booking an appointment at Pristine Care, right? But that's just on a lighter note. Let me kind of dig down into the presentation today. And I'm here to kind of talk about the opportunity in the open internet and uh, what trade desk can help marketers do, right? Audible now? Perfectly. All right. So I'm going to talk about the opportunity in the open internet uh, through trade desk. Uh, you know, marketing is also about, not just about data, but winning hearts and minds, right? And how do you influence your consumers to, and how do, how do kind of basically marketers leverage technology in a smarter fashion? Is there a clicker which works here? Cool. Perfectly. So I have a quick agenda planned for you. Uh, I will introduce you what Trade Desk does, what is the opportunity in the open internet, and basically give you three strategies, which is working model for advertisers to leverage right now. Starting off, right? What do what does Trade Desk stand for? And uh, we are a basically a you know a ad tech platform, and we help uh, help marketers, agencies, and brands buy ads in the most smart fashion, right? Most of our buyers are either brands or agencies. Uh, just to kind of give you a little background in terms of uh, you know what we are all about, uh, we got founded in 2009. We got offices in 29 countries. We are about 3,000 employees. We went public in 2016, and uh, luckily we're growing very, very fast in India as well. We already have two offices in India, one in Gurgaon, the other one in Bangalore, thanks to all the amazing support that we're getting from brands and agencies across. Now, just to kind of give you a, a, a time chart of you know how we started, right? We've been profitable since 2013. Our first million dollar month, which is basically the revenue media dollars being spent through the platform was in 2013. And fast forward to date, in 2022, we had our first $2 billion spent in the quarter, right? Now let's talk about tapping into the open internet and how does traders solve for marketing uh, you know, needs for advertisers, right? Now, broadly, if you see, there are two kinds of you know, methods where people are spending their media dollars, right? On one hand, there, there are these walled gardens like Facebook, uh, you, know, you have your YouTube and Google ecosystem. And the other side, which is what we solve for, is the open internet, right? But let's first understand what does open internet stand for, right? What do we solve for? Now, while you have these world gardens where, you know, you have to, while people are consuming content on Facebook, Instagram Reels, and YouTube and whatnot, there's a whole lot of content being consumed in the open internet, right? And there are various channels. Uh, people stream audio, uh, music, we kind of stream videos. A lot of content nowadays is being consumed through CTV, right? So there's a whole lot of, uh, you know, different channels where consumers are spending their time and in the next slide, I'll kind of show you what are, uh, you know, some of the content uh, platforms where the consumer is spending most time in, right? And, you know, why is open internet at the center stage of India's digital consumption? Now, this is a study that we did through Kantar, and uh, a lot of marketers are interested in knowing about what is the reach of the open internet, right? Uh, so the reach uh, through Trade Desk is about 600 million plus, which is unique reach. And almost 52% of the overall time spent on digital media is being spent on the open internet. What are consumers doing? And of course, they are spoiled for choice, right? Like I was mentioning, you know, we consume a lot of content on OTT channels, stream a lot of music, audio, video, and whatnot. But almost 10 hours of Indians are spending time on the open internet, right? Of course, there is social, but there's also music and podcast. There's online TV. Uh, there is music streaming, online press. And also the new, you know, which is the new feature, I think it's not just the younger audience, but also a lot of, you know, senior folks and moms are into gaming, which is where, you know, uh, you know, timing, timing is being spent, right? Now, the important part here is that, you know, there is an opportunity for marketers to find and connect to these audiences where they're spending the most time in, right? And there's an opportunity to kind of build your brand, reach out to the consumers where they are spending the most time in. Now, let's kind of give you another, you know, number here, right? Just a sec. 
All right, so this is again a study that we did, right? Through Cantar of Trade Desk, where almost 52% of the time, which is almost 10 hours per day, is being spent on the open internet. But still, the ad dollars are, are not towards open internet, right? They're still being, uh, uh, being spent on the world gardens, which should not be the case, right? Uh, and there is a missed opportunity which you can leverage, which marketers can leverage. And there is opportunity for you to kind of, you know, reach out to these consumers wherever they're spending time in, right? And Trade Desk basically solves for an audience first approach where you kind of find your audiences that you care about, whether it's mums for a CPG brand, is it a health conscious customer for a, you know, a, a health app, or let's say, you know, somebody is into, uh, you know, shoes and jewelry and whatnot. So whatever audience that you care about can be found and be targeted in the most specific fashion in the open internet. Make sure there is something problem with the... Uh, okay. Now I'm going to also leave you with three strategies for advertisers to leverage and you know, let's make it a working session. You know, why not just talk about what you can do right, right now to kind of leverage uh, the open internet, right? Number one is omni-channel approach. Number two is the potential with premium video, right? This is premium broadcasted content, which is brand safe. Unlike, you know, UGC content, which is there on social media and YouTube, there is a, a better brand recall. There is better opportunity for advertisers to leverage broadcasted content, which is again, brand safe. And last but not the least, uh, you can le leverage your activating, you can leverage your first party data as well. Uh, we, we heard a lot of examples in the last panel in terms of how brands are collecting their first party data. But what do you do with that data, right, is, is super important. How do you segment it in the right fashion? How do you kind of activate it in the right fashion is something what Trade Desk can solve for. So let's kind of double click on each of these strategies first, right? Number one being omnichannel approach. Let's take a step back, right? In its infancy, the internet was basically around three channels. There was social, there was search, and there was email. But Right now where we are at, if you see the content is being consumed across channels and there are a whole lot of other, uh, you know, uh, whole lot of other places where the consumers are spending time on, right? Whether it's on-demand TV, which is CTV, there's news and articles being read on, you know, Times of India, you know, Times of India, ET and whatnot. There are digital billboards. So if you start visiting Bombay or, you know, some of the, you know, new modern cities, you must have seen these new digital billboards which have come up which can also serve ads programmatically, right? There are lifestyle blogs, which people read quite often, and they kind of also stream music online and watch video online, right? So the world has really moved on from social and search and also moved to some of these new content, you know, consumption uh, destinations, right? Which again, gives the opportunity for advertisers to leverage and, and exploit. I think there is an issue with the clicker, okay. Now we all know that the purchase decisions are non-linear, right? Uh, even if you buy a simple shoe or a phone or a, or a mobile phone, there's a whole lot of research which kind of goes into kind of, you know, first converting, right? Uh, people kind of go ahead and read reviews. They kind of, you know, read articles. They ask their friends, they read publications, and then finally they kind of end up buying something, right? What we've seen is purchase decisions don't happen overnight. 67% of you know customers of multiple channels to complete a single transaction, right? So they could probably go to reviews, they could kind of consume you know videos, they could ask their friends, they could kind of consume content on you know some of the influencers, you know what they say about it. But basically, more channels are needed to kind of influence your customer to ultimately go, you know drive them down the funnel, right? And this is again you know one of the data points that we had that the average number of days taken to convert store visits. So this is done for a QSR restaurant, right? Uh, the number of channels when they were increased, the average number of conversions happened in a much faster fashion, right? So what you see on the right is, the moment they started using more channels, the conversion rate reduced from 12 days to five days, right? If they were using only one channel, it could be PC, it could be tablet, it could be anything else. The conversion days were 12 days. And you can realize that QSR is a short, you know, ticket item value, right? Like, like you don't buy a burger or pizza at multiple, you know, it's not a high ticket item, but if you go and move towards a high ticket item like a, like a car or a jewelry item, the conversion could be much more longer and there is importance for you to leverage more channels uh, in, in, in the most smart fashion, right? Uh, again, amplifying a singular message, which brands are, I spoke about, you know, winning hearts and minds, amplifying a singular message across multiple channels drives effectiveness. 
what we saw is, you know, from moving from one channel to five channels, there was an incremental ROI of 35%, which, you know, some of these brands are getting, right? So we should probably leverage more channels and also have a singular message being spread across these multiple channels. And all of this happens if you keep the customer at the center of everything, right? Uh, it starts with, you know, creating a single view of the customer, which could be a seed audience, which could be a first party data and expanding from there, creating a lookalike and leveraging the most possible fashion. And when you do this, when you kind of bring all of this together, we can see a clearer view of, you know, what is your part to conversion, right? So let's take this example of, you know, one guy who had the first touch on a CTV platform, which could be Samsung ads on 3rd June. Uh, then he had two touches on mobile phones, one on Spotify, other one he was probably getting a, another call through Truecaller. Then, you know, while watching cricket on ESPN, he finally visits the website, but does not kind of, you know, convert, right? Reads another article the next day and finally registers the interest on the website. Now, you see there are like seven touch points before it finally happened, right? And if you kind of, you know, use this in a smart fashion, there are a lot of takeaways from the path of conversion, right? You can actually come to know what is the average number of ad exposures bef before conversion. You can actually F cap your creators, whether you should probably have three creators being shown to a particular person versus five. Why not? This is the data which can help you do that. Average number of days, which is kind of taking from converting a user from a first ad being reflected to finally converting. And then channel effectiveness as well, right? Whether OTTs are working better for you, whether, you know, Spotify or audio streaming is working better for you, or you should probably, you know, uh, double down on CTV, right? All of this data, when it's available to you, you can use it in a much more smarter fashion. Now, unlocking the potential of premium video is another, you know, great thing, which is the second strategy I would like to kind of propose here. Uh, while YouTube is there, almost only 40% of the content that YouTube produce, produces is premium in nature, right? Uh, whereas, if you compare it to OTTs, OTTs are broadcasted premium content, which is brand safe. A lot of production, you know, time and money goes behind producing the content. And what we saw is that, you know, whenever you kind of, you know, showcase an ad on OTT or a CTV channel, there is a better, uh, you know, brand recall because it's broadcasted content. People are much more in the mindset of consuming, you know, brand messages as compared to UGC content, which is probably done in a scrolling fashion, right? And Indians are also more trusting and receptive to ads associated with premium content, which is again, broadcasted, you know, premium quality content compared to UGC, right? You don't want your ad to be seen when somebody's kind of, you know, running cat videos, right? You don't want to kind of, you know, have something funny going on there. Instead of, you know, showing ad where the user has the, you know, mindset of consuming that particular content, you have the better user attention. It could be done in a pre-roll, you know, non-skippable way, which again kind of gives you the message uh, you know, in, in the fuller form, right? Uh, and connected TV is again big, right? This is uh, a trend that we've, uh, all, you know, seen across the globe. This is a large TV, which is, you know, the trend of cord cutters, the new kid on the block. Uh, India has almost a potential of 30 million households which are using uh, connected TV. It's about to grow to 50 million by 2025. Uh, so while the scale is increasing, a lot of advertisers are interested in knowing about how can we leverage this new kid on the block as well, right? Uh, and in the US and some of the more advanced markets, connected TV is actually overtaken uh, linear already, right? Uh, and there could be a possibility where, you know, you can run ads programmatically, which is, you know, let the machine do the learning uh, and talking for you while deciding how should you run your media and where on connected TV, right? Uh, there is a 37% households who are only cord cutters, right? Uh, they have not have, they don't have linear TV access at all, right? Because they, they chose to kind of go with the internet TV way, right? So CTV is more targeted, it's more measurable and more interactive. Now it brings you the beauty of all the linear TV advantages in a much more data-driven fashion, right? Uh, and there is a proprietary technology that Trade Desk ha has, which is called Core Identity Alliance, which can help you reach, uh, identify reach at a household level, also at an individual level, and also at a device level, right? Uh, Individual users have multiple devices, but can you, uh, as an advertiser, do you want to have an objective of reaching a particular household once? Or do you also have, you know, an objective of reaching all the individuals in that household is something that we can help you solve for. Last but not the least, uh, this is the third strategy I want to leave you with, which is activating and enriching your first party data. Uh, you know, I don't know what's the value of first party data, you know, for marketers. It's all about not just having the data, but activating in the right fashion, right? Uh, but also activating with a partner which uh, can do it in a privacy safe fashion and 
helps you leverage it in a more personal, personalized way while taking care of all your privacy and consent uh, protocols, right? Now, building is the first party data collection is again, you know, that's, that's the brand's responsibility. You can kind of give freebies. You can kind of run contests and offers where you can collect for first party data. But enriching is a whole another game, right? First, you have to have a way to kind of onboard your first party data. You can either do it, do it through your CRM, uh, data collected via pixels. These are basically soft codes invest, you know, uh, inserted in your website. So any action which is happening on your website gets collected and can be activated. And of course, the media dollars that you're running, there's a lot of campaign data which gets generated alongside with it, right? So can you leverage all of this data and retarget and continuously engage your consumers in a much more smarter fashion, right? These could be people who are, have already engaged with your ads, right? Which means they are some way influenced with what is the brand message that you're sending. Is there a way for you to kind of target people who have seen, let's say, 50% of your ad you know, in a video format, right? There is a way to kind of do that. Uh, you can also create lookalike models. Now, if, if you already have a data of people who are already your consumers, uh, who have shown interest and you know loyalty towards your brand, you can find, let's say, 10 times other consumers who are of similar behavioral you know, nature and leverage that to kind of increase your top funnel and your bottom funnel as well. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, I think uh, if you uh, want to kind of know more about Trade Desk, uh, happy to kind of talk more about it. But we believe that the opportunity for advertisers and agencies and brands is in the open internet where all your consumers are spending increasingly more time across channels, whether it's CTV, OTTs, gaming, podcasts, and whatnot. Uh, I will leave you with one of the other, you know, reports that we did recently, which is, which has a whole lot of other insights. And there's the QR code if you want to kind of leverage it and scan it, uh, which is, which is going to give you a lot of insights in terms of why the op open internet matters and how it can be leveraged by, you know, brands and agencies. So thank you so much. Uh, I can take a few questions if there's time, otherwise I'm good. All right, thank you so much for your time.